Okay, well thank you guys so much for joining us today. We're going to go and get started. We're still missing just a few people that have registered, but I'm sure they'll trickle in, and if not, maybe they're watching <coughs> online as well. So we are live streaming this event as well as recording it, so we can archive it for later. So if you hear something you like today or want to remember, you'll be able to revisit those uh, by going to the website, and I'll send out that link next week after we prepare everything. So just a few notes before we get started that I kind of wanted to talk about social media um, at university college, at the university level, and you know why we have Brad here with us today why he's been working with us for the past few months, and then also what are I and I came to him with the, the question almost of, you know, how do you link Facebook with retention, with graduation rates? You know, how do we use Facebook so that we can make sure that students are, are being retained and that we're keeping them? And we realized kind of after talking before we really sat down with Brad that those two things aren't really directly related necessarily. I mean, they are in a lot of different ways, but it wasn't something that we were going to put on Facebook or do on Facebook that was just going to magically graduate our students. So we were going to see this correlation that, you know, was there and we didn't know exists and Brad was going to teach us all about it. And, you know, as we started looking at the different organizations within University College, um, with the different units that there are, and the different pieces that we put together on every day, we realized those are the pieces, you know, that are making our efforts for retention and graduation. It's about the events that we're putting on, the services that we're providing, the communications that we give the students every day. And the real question was, how do we utilize social media in order to share those in order to make sure that we're pushing those to students and that you know students are finding out about our events that they're encouraged to attend our events that they're they're wanting to attend our events and that they're seeing that other students are also being involved in those events as well so focusing um, on why we kind of brought brad in today and we have two more sessions as well that you'll be able to register for later um, was really just thinking about the fact that, you know, we want to use social media effectively. It's an easy platform. Students are on Facebook, they're on Twitter, and, you know, a lot of us maybe have our own departmental accounts, we may have our own event accounts, we may just have our own personal accounts that we use every day, but there's still a disconnect between really grasping what we want to do on Facebook and what we want to provide to students and how we can use that effectively to really move us forward within our departments. Um, so main reasons for using Facebook in this instance or social media in general would be just to connect with others so connecting with the students in some fashion whether that's on a, a very personal level whether that's just you know talking to them every day sharing your message getting that out making it a, a normal thing for your office to communicate with students in that fashion just like you do in person or just like you do in email or just like you do with your website Second would be to make your office and services more visible. So how many times have you known an event's going on on campus and you go to search for it and you can't find anything about it? You saw a flyer once or you saw an email, but you can't find things about it online or you can't find things about it on Facebook or on their website or even on the events calendar for IUPUI. And then just self-promotion, talking yourself up. You know, why is your service or your office, why are you great? What does that mean to students? So, you know, if I'm the the Office of Academic Advising or the Office of Student Employment, you know, what do I want to say about myself to make students go, oh, you know what, that's a great service, that's a great thing that they're doing, or that's a great event that they're about to have that sounds really fun and interesting. And then also just to get news out quickly. A lot of times, you know, we just want to be sharing a congratulations thing to a student that has done something neat with our office, for our office, or that was provided by our office. Um, and then also just, you know, telling everybody every day what's kind of going around in that realm. So not always, you know, our students always thinking about um, your certain program or your certain event, but if we're putting it out there constantly and talking about different things, we're able to kind of ping those students more often. So why social media? Um, it's inexpensive, obviously. Uh, in, some, in some realms, you know, there's, there's ways that we can actually rack up the charges for it. Um, we can do different promoting on it, which Brad will explain a little bit later. 
Um, you can also pay for services that help you manage all of your social media realms, which can be really useful, but there's also a lot of inexpensive ways that you can jump into social media, run it effectively on your own in your office, and not have to hire more staff just to do so. And then also, it's, it's easy to use. And I, I did put a star up there because some people are like, wait, like, why can't we seem to figure out what to do on our Facebook page then if it's so easy? Well, it's not necessarily that you know, Facebook's hard to use. It's just sometimes we need more ideas. We need more best practices to say, what should I be doing today? How often should I be posting? What should I be talking about on Facebook? What should I do you know, when I see slander about IUPUI on Facebook? How do I respond to those, those different pieces? And it doesn't take a lot of time. It does to plan to really you know, start getting that in your everyday life. But once you get going and once you consider it, you know, like updating your website, sending out an email to the staff listserv to share with other students, it's just going to become second nature for your office once you can assign some, a few people, you know, to kind of take control over that, to have ownership over it, and to look towards the students that work for your office as well to, you know, want to be part of this, to have their own staff accounts for IUPUI that they can go in and answer questions for students, they can share about events, they can quickly post something about one of the services being provided, um, all of that would take very little time. It'd be like sending an email almost, just to have somebody log in. Once you get that infra infrastructure set up, then you're pretty much ready to go from that point. So let's get started. Um, I have the pleasure of introducing Brad Ward. He's the CEO and co-founder of Blue Fuego Incorporated, located here in Indianapolis. Um, and he's actually you're from Indianapolis, correct? No. Um, no. Okay. Well, Illinois. <laughs> okay. Slowing he's into the Hoosier role. <laughs> <laughs> so he's spoken around the globe at more than in more than 75 higher ed conferences and workshops. Um, his work has been featured in magazines and websites such as Campus Technology, University Business, CNET, The New York Times, and more. Um, and he has a Butler MBA with a concentration in leadership. So please join me in welcoming Brad. Okay. So yeah, I'll um, tell you a bit more about my background. Um, Blue Fuego, we've, we've been uh, around for five years now. Uh, we're in our fifth year. Um, while I was getting my Butler MBA, I worked at Butler in the admission office as an electronic communication coordinator. So think admission counselor who doesn't travel. I, I, my job was the internet, they said figure out how to recruit students online and figure out how to tie it into traditional methods. And so that was my role there. Before that, I um, did my undergrad at University of Illinois at Springfield, which is the smaller of the three U of I campuses. Um, and after graduating there, I had spent uh, two years as a marketing recruitment specialist. So basically, I've been in higher ed since, since graduating. Uh, know it and love it, just, just like all of you, I'm sure. And uh, it's just, it's exciting to be in this role now, helping schools figure out these new tools and tactics and, and how to apply them. So I think my big awakening to, to a lot of this was when I was actually in college. Um, I was a resident assistant and had built a website. This was back like 2002, 2003. Um, the website just, it collected photos, videos. There were forums, you know, before a lot of these social tools existed. Um, but what I saw through my three years of being an RA was that my wing had a 95% retention rate for the university versus about a 75% for incoming students. And so um, that was a big eye opener of like, wow, these, these tools connect people and, and allow conversations to happen. And that can be a really good thing. Um, I'll talk in a bit about the IUPUI Class of 2017 Facebook group. Right now there are about 1,100 students who are in this group getting to know each other, finding roommates, asking um, Eric or people in admissions questions about the university. Uh, and just to kind of go back to, to one of Eric's slides real quick, uh, you know, on this, it doesn't take a lot of time, it's easy to use. Uh, I look at social as, as basically a, a new telephone. You know, it's, it's a preferred communication method for a lot of students. It might be the way they want to interact with you, and so, when I hear somebody say, oh, I can't you know, check a Facebook page, I can't do this or that, I, you know, well, if I called you, would you pick up your phone and answer my question? Probably, so if this is the way I want to interact with you, um, if, if you're willing to accommodate that, it, it can be great for both audiences. So, um, you know, talking about Facebook, it's, it's a behemoth, right? There are a billion people on Facebook, about one out of every seven people in the world. It's just incredible to look at the stats. Um, they used to publish this number of 
collectively how much time people spent on Facebook daily. Um, the number at one point, this was probably two or three years ago, the world collectively, if you add up all the minutes spent on Facebook, um, it was about 14,000 years of time per day. And just, they stopped publishing the number, and that was when they were like three or 400 million. And so, when you look at it, you think, you know, we're spending a lot of time here, we're doing a lot. Um, I've seen various stats, you know, usage is decreasing, enthusiasm of the, of the tools is, is decreasing, and I, I think a lot of that's happening, but where Facebook is in a great place is that we have invested so much into the platform through our connections, through our photos, through, um, you know, all the different things it offers that it's really hard to just pick up and leave the platform. If I say, hey, I'm going to go to Google+, Plus, well, I'm going by myself, right, <laughs> because all my friends are staying here. So Facebook has that going for them, um, that data portability, there's really no solution for it yet. So that's why we're looking at it, that's why we're thinking about it. Um, and then today specifically, we're, we're basically looking at two options of Facebook, which are pages and groups. And I just want to talk through a bit of the two types, um, what they are, what they aren't, uh, and, and basically which one might be right for you. So of, of you in the room, who is currently uh, like an administrator for an IUPUI Facebook page? Okay, and how about groups? Okay, so really not, not many group users. Um, yeah? Mine's actually a page, kind of like IUPUI has their someone's name IPY. Okay, like so a personal it's a, profile. Yeah, it's Brittany and Kelly Andy for the Kelly School of Business. Okay. But it's not a page. Great. Yeah, so we'll talk about that. Uh, those those are great as well. So when you're when you're trying to make this decision of page or group, a lot of what you'll see is about Facebook pages. Um, a, a Facebook page is essentially this this official presence for someone and groups have traditionally been more like you know, Peyton Manning fan club or something like that, or uh, my family has one, and so we kind of use that to just keep each other up to date on what's happening, because we don't really do family reunions anymore, we just kind of use that, and then when we can all get together, we do. But um, there, there are a lot of differences. Facebook tends to push you towards a page. The reason for that is the monetization of it. It's a lot easier for Facebook to make money through you using a page than you using a group. So I think that's why they tend to push people in that direction. But I think groups are still really valuable. So when you look at some key differences, and, and again, we're archiving this, we'll get you the slides as well. Um, pages cannot be private. Everything on a page is public. Also, someone can interact with your page without having liked it. And, and that's changed in, in probably the last 18 months or so. So it used to be if I wanted to comment on your page or interact, you know, like a photo, et cetera, I had to actually like your page to take that action. Now I can just step on and say whatever I want and leave. And that is just, you know, it's a little different. Whereas a group, um, there are three different types of groups. There's an open group, which means I can see everything about your group, but I have to join it to interact. Um, there's a private group, which means I can see your group, I can see the members who are in it, which can be valuable, because if, if I have friends on Facebook who are in that group, I'm gonna see their photos there. Um, and then the third type is secret, meaning if you don't have the URL to it, you're not gonna find it on Facebook through search, et cetera. Um, but again, page is totally open. Uh, with vanity URLs, so facebook.com slash IUPUI, that's a nice, short, clean URL. It's called a vanity URL. Uh, on pages, you can have those. On groups, I say no just because it's not as clean. You can have facebook.com slash groups slash something, but it's just, it's a little different. So um, pages kind of have that advantage. Uh, this is the huge one to me, message delivery, meaning when you update that, how is your audience receiving it? So if you have a Facebook page, if you have 100 followers, fans, likes, whatever you wanna call them, when you update that page, they're gonna see it in the newsfeed, right? So I log into Facebook and I, I see the content. Now the thing about Facebook is every time each of you who have an account log in, you have to see something interesting, right? Because the moment you start logging in and see content that you don't care about, you'll lose interest. And when you lose interest, you stop going to Facebook. When you stop going to Facebook, they stop making money off of you. So there's this whole algorithm called edge rank. 
and it determines what you see on Facebook based on what you interact with. So if you've ever Facebook stalked someone, you know, you go through and look at all their pictures, what they do on vacation, blah, 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 and then the next day they update, that's gonna be in your news feed. Or if you like a new page and you interact with them, you comment on a few things, you're gonna see them. But that page who only talks about themselves, who only promotes themselves, and you never like or comment anything, and we'll talk about content in the next session, as you don't do those actions, Facebook will say, you know, okay, maybe that's not really important to them, and if they're not gonna do anything with it, I don't wanna show it to them because it's not interesting and they might not come back. Um, so essentially what happens over time with pages, if you have 100, 500, 1,000 likes, whatever it is, there might be 20 to 30% of those people who actually see your content in the newsfeed. So it's not very reliable in the sense that if, if you need to say, hey, um, you know, this tutor is not showing up today. Like if you post that at 10 a.m. and you have 100 fans on your page, maybe 10 of them will see it in time. And of those 100, you know, who, who cares about that tutor? Who was coming that day? That sort of thing. It, it kind of goes down from there. Whereas groups, there are three different types of notifications. You see it in the news feed. Um, you get the notification, if, you know, the, the little number one that tells you there's something to look at. I'm one of those types that if it's there, I have to click it because I want that to disappear. But, you know, as a result, I see it. So it comes through there. Then also there's an email that comes through. So in my inbox, I see that someone has posted something new. So I think that's really valuable as you think about these smaller audiences you might be trying to connect with. It sort of breaks you out of the Facebook clutter. You know, you're not just living in the news feed with, I like Beagles, I like Volkswagen, mom, dad, best friend, roommate, all that. Um, it, it sort of, there, there are multiple ways for them to catch that message. Um, chat, that's another one. So on pages, there's no chat feature. On groups, if you're under 250 members, there's actually a built-in chat feature. So people can log in, click there, and talk amongst other group members. Again, that notification is happening. If I'm signed into chat, someone goes into the group and says something, it's gonna pop up on my screen. And so there, there's a neat little feature there. There's also document collaboration on groups. So people can upload files. Um, you can edit them and, and re-upload them and it will tell you kind of what's the newest version, who's uploaded it. There's some, some neat features on kind of the educational side around that. Um, but groups don't really offer any insights or analytics. So you see the list, you see who the users are, um, and, and kind of from there it's up to you to, to do some manual legwork depending on what you want to know. So for the IUPUI 2017 group, Every Monday at 8.30 a.m. I have a reminder on my calendar. I go in, I have a, a Google document, and I list every student who joined the group that week and the day they joined. And then Bobby Bell over in admissions compares that to his database and says, okay, on, on March 12th, this student joined and their current admit their status is admitted. And then we kind of track that coming up to May 1. So that's one way we use the group data. We wanna know who in the group is admitted, who's deposited, um, who's you know hasn't even applied yet and and we kind of use it that way pages offer a lot of insights and, and we'll talk about that in the, in the next couple sessions but they'll tell you the breakdown of your audience they'll tell you what people are looking at what people are interacting with um, and again a lot of it's driven towards that that dollar that they want to say well you're here but you could be here if you spend this much money and so you, you kind of avoid all that with groups um, and then just overall scope, you know, as you're looking at pages, they're very broad. They're intended to be kind of that macro level um, and, and groups more of that micro. So just to kind of go through some examples as we look at, at pages versus groups. Um, so if you were a club of, of 25 students who need to communicate with each other, what would you say, page or group? <coughs> All right, so what about a department on campus that serves over a thousand students per semester? Page, yeah. Because as you get towards that larger number, it's, it's not as easy to, to be very focused in your content, right? You can't say, hey, this tutor's not showing up today. Relevant for two people, not relevant for 998. So um, 
your audience almost dictates your content as well. And again, next uh, <laughs> next session we'll talk about content, but um, just kind of being aware of, of what you are. What about the fall study abroad fair? Good oh, question. Yeah. Neither. So um, if typically if if it's something that has a date or a timeline or an end date to it really at that point are just cluttering the IUPUI space you know um, we, we always want to be concerned of like brand saturation basically if I'm searching IUPUI one I want to be able to find these more top-level pages that, that are providing content because as soon as this events over no one does anything with that and if we get 500 people into a group or a page whatever it is that's great but the moment that events over we're not going to do anything with them anymore. So I'd rather drive them to who's in charge of this. Let's get them to that pager group and let's tell them about this event through that. Then when the event's over, we're still going to be talking about other stuff and we're going to keep them interested in, in that new content. So, sorry to trick you there. Uh, 21st Century Scholars. Anyone from there in here? No? Pager group. Over. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you're talking about uh, if you're talking about all the 21st century scholars on campus, you're talking about a page because we're talking you know, a couple thousand. Yeah, but for an incoming, still a sizable sizable yeah. group of students. I mean, six, seven hundred students. Okay. So, I don't know what you do. is that the ba based on what between lands? based on what they currently have? Yeah, I I put group there just because I think okay. um, it's that again that collaborative nature or opportunity to to provide basically an online community for them because I I would hope that through that you can get them talking to each other which again on pages it's more like one to many I'm gonna tell you something groups are let's talk to each other and you know whatever it is we're, we're working on where we need information about so. so is it sort of based on the content of what you're going to be delivering on a regular basis when you choose a group or a page it, it can be. Um, I think size is kind of that first filter of, of who are you talking to, because that almost determines the content. But but from there, yeah, it, it if you know the the cl incoming class group, we really just want them interacting with each other. You know, admissions is gonna deliver important information through email, through mail, all of that. We don't really need to use Facebook as that next channel to deliver information. We're just allowing people to, that way when they step on campus, they already know a handful of people and it's gonna make their experience better. So yeah, that's a good question though. Uh, Office of Student Employment. Page, good job. So um, you would almost think like, oh, I'd love for that to be a group because you know maybe we wanna talk about some more specific stuff, but since it's so large as, as an organization, um, you, you kind of have to stick more towards page on that one. And they've got, is anybody from OSU? Yeah, so you've got like 600 some likes on the page. Um, and yeah, really doing, doing a good job of content through that, so. Um, so let's look at groups a bit. So this is just a screenshot of the, the IUPUI class of 2017. Um, when, when we implemented this, basically the strategy, uh, the, the, the vision I laid out was let's use it kind of on the front side up to May 1 for admissions. We'll get students who are admitted into this group, we'll allow them to see others um, and you know, kind of drive them into to all of these conversations so that if somebody says, I'm from New Jersey, who's from New Jersey? There are actually other students from New Jersey in there kind of affirming this decision that you're not crazy going to the cornfields of Indiana for school, right? So. We're using it for that, but then now that we're in kind of this orientation phase, we're getting orientation people involved. And then when you know the, the fall semester starts, basically handing it over to UC to use it for retention, for, for broad level, you know, here's the last day to get your textbooks, don't forget to do this, here's a great opportunity, do you need a job, et cetera. Um, so there are about 1,200 people in here right now our goal was a thousand just kind of based on previous years with with organic growth that was the number we came up with um, I was just telling Eric before we started right now if you if you look at the, the 1200 or so who are in the group 1100 whatever it is um, over 90% of them have submitted a deposit 
and that compares for our other clients leading up to May 1, 30 to 40 percent for you know even like private schools. Uh, and so the other interesting one is with a group, something I probably should have mentioned, you can just add people to it. So if I'm Eric's friend on Facebook and I'm like, oh, he, he's probably interested in this group, I can just add him and he just goes straight into it and, and there's like no transaction whatsoever and no, no say on his part. So with the people who are in this group, 98% of them have stayed. So there are a lot of people that admission counselors have said, hey, now that you're admitted, come in here. Or other friends who said, hey, you're going to IUPUI with me, go in this group. So 98% of people who have been added to the group have stayed in this group. And that compares to about 70 to 80% with other clients that we see. So what we're seeing in this group is that they're, they're highly committed to coming here and that the content is good enough that they're sticking around and continuing to have conversations with others. So when I come in, um, you know, again, I can, I can click uh, members and then go to members by join date. And this is kind of how I pull that data. But I just wanted you to see, you know, a lot of these have been added by Melissa. Um, you know, there, there are others who kind of the friend adds the friend as I talked about. We see a lot of that. Um, but that's basically where I pull that data I talked about earlier of who's in the group. If you want to find a member, you can just quickly type in a name. It will tell you if they're in the group or not. Um, a, lot of, a lot of features there. And this is basically as, as difficult as groups get. <laughs> so you say, what's my privacy? As we talked about earlier, open, close, or secret. Um, membership, any member can add or approve members, or any member can add members, but an admin must approve them. So that's saying, I can add him, but the admin has to allow him to come in. So if, you, if you're a smaller group, maybe you're focused on 30 or 40 students, a specific program, specific club, whatever it is, and you wanna kind of limit or control who's entering that, then you wanna have this one checked. <coughs> um, set up a group address. You can actually set up an email address through Facebook that people can email to submit to, whether it's a post or uh, a document. So that's an option. We don't really use it a lot, but it's there. Um, description, if you want to type in what the group's about, you can do that. Otherwise, it just um, it will, will be blank. And then posting permissions. I always just leave that, that members can post in the group. I don't think it really makes sense to say that only administrators can post because you're, you, know, you want to bring them in and encourage them to interact with you. And then the bottom one here, you can choose if group posts must be approved by you as an administrator. And there can be multiple administrators as well. So don't feel like if you start a group, the burden is all on you to, to take care of all this. You can get others involved and, and they can help you with that. Um, if there are questions at any time, please feel free to stop me. We'll, we'll do Q&A afterwards. But um, if you have specific questions on any screenshots, we can stop there. <laughs> and I just wanted to show this as this is an email I got saying in the, the class of 2017 group, Ashley has posted. And so, you know, I can click to view the post, I can edit my email set settings, I can actually just reply to the email and that will go as a comment. So when you think about your workflow, that's a really helpful on, on both groups and pages. So if you have your notifications set to that all activity comes to you as an email, say you have a page and somebody asks a question. You know, rather than going to Facebook, logging in, checking it, responding, et cetera, this email just comes and you just reply to the email, which is pretty much as simple as, you know, what, what you already do with a lot of students that they email you and you respond to their question. <coughs> so Facebook takes care of taking that email and putting it back into the Facebook world on that thread where they get the response and the notification that it happened. So that's really nice. Um, and then just talking about that vanity URL, I, I do, even though it's a little longer, I encourage schools to do it. Um, so with IUPUI, this is kind of the link we share. What we do with some other clients, if, if IT is willing and helpful, we set up just a super short redirect. So with Ohio Wesleyan, we have uh, ow.edu slash 2017, and that's what we promote out. So I, I don't want to open a can of worms with IT, but I don't know what you guys have in, in terms of, of shortened URLs or what's possible there. 
but it, it's, it's a lot easier to promote that than to tell somebody, go to facebook.com slash group slash 370-271-4630-545571 and you know, join the group. The other reason I like to have specific direct URLs to share, there are a lot of companies out there who love your audience. So when I was at Butler, um, it was called Facebook Gate in, in the New York Times, so it was, it was uh, 2008. Um, I had a, a, a friend I met at a conference, she worked at Winthrop University, and she emailed me and said, hey, this really weird thing happened. This kid joined our group, but I have no record of him in our system. Hasn't applied, isn't a prospect. Like, do you know why he would do that? And I just said, I don't know, like, that's really interesting. So a couple months later, we, we mail out all, all decisions from Butler, <clears throat> and a student joins our group from Texas the day after we mailed admission decisions. I thought there's no way that got to Texas already. So I hop over to our system, check, name's not there. I'm like, that name's familiar. So go back to my email and say like, did I have a conversation with this kid, what's going on? And of course Michelle's email pops up and it's the same name, same student. So essentially what we discovered through that was there is a, a marketing company who is kind of sending students out through all these group fake students who would post links like, hey, where'd you guys get your dorm sheets? I got mine here. You click on that link and buy your sheets, I get 15%. You know, just this whole affiliate referral scheme. The crazy thing about it, they were in over a thousand university groups. Um, the student who connected Winthrop and Butler, they only used that account for six schools. And just like, how that came together was nuts but basically as a result of that now those companies just set up their own groups so they'll say IUPUI class of 2017 because if they can get a thousand students to join that one instead of mine they own the top level administration keys and they can just send those messages out don't forget to get your sheets hey you should get your books through this online provider rent them don't buy them all that and like I mean could make hundreds of thousands of dollars a year so yeah. I, w I uh, did a Facebook page for another area down at the other end of the campus. Uh -huh. And we did get emails or likes from people all over the world. Yeah. And I did get something like that one time. Somebody from another country was wanting to know what textbooks we used. So that yeah. was probably what that was. Probably. Yeah. Uh -huh. So I think we have a, a bit of just responsibility or duty to protect students, protect their interests incoming students especially who are just naive and, and excited to be here um, so yeah that by, by having this you can send them straight to it they'll get to your group what I don't like is when you say go to Facebook and search for us because again there are so many pages related to the institution that there's a good chance they'll just give up and not get there so that's why this is all all valuable to me so as you think about um, growing your group as we talked about you know you can add people in you can do a lot of that but I think as, as you can see in the screenshot these are all people who work at IEPY and I don't know if you want to kind of step on and, and talk about why why this exists and what what you know kind of thinking behind it well and actually I mean the idea came from you I believe when we started working with admissions as well so you know admissions has been very heavily involved with the class of 2017 so probably few of you have seen it or heard about it or touched it quite yet but that's kind of coming as it transitions across the board and so you know avoiding to have a personal account and you know trying to talk to students who are probably going to try to friend you or you know maybe your profile picture is you at an event and you just don't want to really have that touch it's better to create the staff accounts where you log in separately you have a separate email where all this goes to and you know it identifies you that you work here you know you're Eric at IUPUI you're Melissa at IUPUI and it's amazing if you go into this class of 2017 group and I you know encourage you guys to go join that just so you can see what's going on um, the amount of questions that students are asking specific people. And so when I hopped in there, yeah, Melissa answers every question, <laughs> yeah. pretty much. No, no but she, you know, she's very active in it. The students know her on a you know, semi-personal level through Facebook. 
they, they will say, oh, I haven't gotten my housing contract. Melissa at IUPUI, do you know, you know when I'm going to find out about that? Because they, they trust her at this point. They've found somebody that they've connected to, and you know, it gives her a very professional-looking account where she can talk about herself, and she can put her likes and interests on there, but it's still not her personal thing, so it really gives a, a professional look to the university. Same with mine. You know, it's just a you know, standard picture. I still put in my likes, where I'm from, where I went to high school, what my interests are, and whatnot. Oh, and there we are. <laughs> and so then, uh, you know, I'm able to um, just go ahead and, you know, comment on people's questions or post my own things to the page. Um, and then students know that that's coming from IUPUI. And they start to learn, oh, Eric, you know, knows a lot about orientation. If I have a question about that, I can ask him. Later, you know, we got Jacob involved and we got Stephanie involved. And now they're on there asking questions and students know their names to ask as well. So as you're moving into this or even as you create your own face for pages and groups, you're going to want to have your own staff account so you can kind of communicate separate from what your normal social media venues are anyway. Yeah. Thanks. Um, and so again, with, with the type to add feature in the group, you basically just come up here, you start typing a friend's name in, and, and it drops down. So, oh, no, that's my personal account. Yeah, I know, exactly. Because <laughs> you're, you're, you're already in the group. shirtless in your picture. Yeah. You're, you're already in the group. <laughs> You're already in the group, so it wouldn't let me do your other one. Um, but the other nice thing, again, is is through that through that account, you know, connecting with students who you're interacting and working with, and then just being able to, to put them in those groups. So I, I talked about this earlier with that with the retention, the deposit. Um, this has gone up as we got closer to May 1st, but um, just really encouraging to see that. So in review on groups, administration set by you. You get to determine who can join. You know, if anyone can join, you get to determine if posts go straight to the group or if you have to approve them. The monitoring, you get the notifications and the emails when activity is happening. So I think that's good for you. And then in terms of promotion, you're looking at creating that direct link, sending them straight to that, and then inviting friends, students, other staff members into the group. So that's kind of your, your growth strategy. So flipping over to pages, here, here's a page. And as you, if you come as an admin, you're going to see you are posting, commenting, and liking as the page. You're going to see notifications here. And then you're going to see a button that says Show. And when you click that Show button, it's going to drop down an entire admin panel, which we'll see in a few screenshots. Um, there's also a notifications page, so this is going to tell you everything happening on your page. So if you want kind of a quick place to go and see what do I need to care about right now, <clears throat> this will tell you, you know, if people are commenting on photos, if they're liking a photo, etc. And then you can kind of respond accordingly. Um, this is the admin panel, and uh, I, I highlighted where they're asking you to spend money as I talked about that. Hey, get more likes, 15 bucks a day. Hey, build your audience, boost your post. Um, it, it's been really interesting to watch them play with this language. They've tried about three different verbs there in, in the past three weeks. Um, it was called boost for a while, it was called promote for a while, um, enhance. And they're, they're really trying to figure out like what will people click and spend money on. Um, boost has been there for a while, so I'm interested to see if, if that continues. The other thing just to point out is this messages area. So more recently, you can now message a page privately and ask a question. So that kind of just brings an additional layer to pages as you think about the, the administration of it and taking care of people. You've got your whole page to worry about all your content there, but then you also have to keep an eye on this, which comes to you through, through email. So in this bar here, edit page, just kind of highlighting that. If you go to manage notifications, that's where you can say how you want to be notified. So you might say, notify me on Facebook. So it, it pops up telling you people have done something. Personally, for, for clients, I don't, I don't need to know all your day to day. So I have that unchecked, you can see. But I, if you're running the page, I would encourage you to have that checked. Um, and then here, the, the, probably the most important one, sending notifications to your email address when people are doing something. That way you know what's going on. Um, so the other one here, manage admin roles. This is really important. I think you need to, if you're, if you're running a page, know about this. Uh, and this is new in, in the past few months. If you have students helping you, if you have other staff members helping you, I'd really encourage you to look at who is an administrator and what their level is. <coughs> students, for example, 
I really think they probably just need to be maybe like here or down, moderator, advertiser, or insights. So manager, basically, you do all. You're like this lord of the page. You know, you can ban people, you can shut them down, you can cancel admins. So if you have a student who's a manager role, they theoretically could, could knock all of you out as staff and own that page and do whatever they want with it, which is a kind of a scary thought. Um, content creator basically takes that role out, but you can still edit the page. I can change the description of it. I can change the name of it. I can do a lot of that stuff. I can write as the page. I can respond to, I can delete comments. I can send messages. I can create ads. I can view insights. The next step down there is moderator. I can respond and delete comments, but I can't post something as the page on purpose or on accident. Um, I can't edit the page. I can't add apps. I can't manage admin. So again, students might more likely moderator or below. Um, advertiser, create ads, view insights, and then insights analyst, strictly view the, the insights, the data for the page. So there, there's some different roles there for you. Just to kind of show you what this looks like, uh, I pulled out another client, the new school. Um, so you can see there, there are managers who kind of work there. Here's a student who's a, a content creator. Um, and then they have Joe and I from Blue Fuego listed as insights analyst because we don't need to do anything else with the page. We're just collecting and, and looking at and analyzing the data for them. So that's kind of where that setup is. And you can see I can delete myself, but I can't change any of these other admins. Um, and I just threw this in here. Uh, might work better for the next presentation, but, but I just wanted to touch on um, sort of this you know what, in the interest of time, I'm going to save that for the next one, so you have to come back. <laughs> <laughs> so, page promotion. How, how do you promote a page? Um, the first way is free. So, you can put call outs on your site, you know, the little social icons. Um, you can put a link in your email signature. You can post great content. That will have people come to your, you know, your page. If others share it, and I see it in the news feed, that's a free way to, to grow your page. Um, you can invite friends to the page by, by doing that way back here feature. So invite friends if you know of others who, who should be interested in it. Um, you can do that. And then you can actually upload a CSV file of email addresses and invite people to your page that way. So if you have an email list of people you interact with frequently, um, just do that and, and Facebook will say, hey, Eric at IUPUI thinks you would be interested in this page. Do you want to like this page? And then you go down to the paid methods. <clears throat> Facebook ads, Facebook promoted posts, and Facebook sponsored stories, which are all very different and unique. So ads are the, the ones you see on the right side. You know, I get ads for credit cards and working out and all this other, you know, dating sites, all that, because of age and, and gender and all that. It's, it's based on those kind of demographical stuff. Promoted posts are essentially, you've posted a piece of content on your page, and now you want to make sure people see that. So when I talked earlier about how a very small percentage of your audience actually sees your content, this is Facebook's way of saying basically pay to play. Like, oh, you want 70% of your audience to see this? Give us 15 bucks and we'll make it happen. So if you log into Facebook and you ever see like a, um, so basically you click here, uh, boost post, and you set your budget, how much do you want to spend, and it will tell you based on the, the dollar increments how many people you will reach. So for the undergrad admissions page, it's saying if you spend five bucks, we'll get this in front of 940 to 1700 people. And these are people who like your page and their friends. So you could go out and reach 80,000 people for $500, but 79,000 of them don't care about you because they're just a friend of someone who likes you on Facebook. So that usually doesn't make a whole lot of sense. Uh, here's just an example. Rhonda likes Sprint, and so when I go to my news feed, I get advertisements for Sprint. So that's kind of this other sponsored stories feature where we're, we're leveraging a, a friend or a, a fan of the page and we're promoting to others based on that connection. Um, so, you know, it's, it's entered my news feed. It tells me right down here, sponsored. And so I know that Sprint has paid for that spot in my news feed. So when you do that, when you, when you click and do this, you basically get some data that says, okay, Brad spent 
and we got 4,200 people to see this, meaning it loaded in their newsfeed on their phone or on the website. And that's gonna kind of tell me basically what, what that $30 got for me. So by spending the $30, I had about 900 photo views, had 135 people like a post on the page, 67 people checked in to the, the page as a result, 29 people played a video, 17 people commented on something, seven people shared something, three link clicks and zero page mentions. Uh, and then I come over here and it says, in total 9,000 people saw the post, so 5,000 of them organically came across it, 3,000 were viral, which are kind of some of this happening, it goes out and other people see as a result, and then my paid promotion here, 4,238, which correlates up there. So if I hadn't spent the 30 bucks, you know, maybe I would have had like five to 6,000 views um, but, but bringing in that paid reach just kind of adds this new dimension. So while you definitely don't want to pay to promote every post, there might be content that makes sense for you to do that. Um, you know, a lot of times you might see people like your page as a result of that happening. Um, so that's kind of the, the, the money side of things. So just to, to wrap this up, Facebook page interview, administration, you get to assign levels, you get to determine who is able to do what. Um, the monitoring, you get your email, you get your notifications. So similar to a group in that anytime something happens, they're gonna tell you, but it's up to you to, to take action on that. Um, and then promotion, when you look at growing your page, it's paid and unpaid, but increasingly becoming a paid world. Meaning, um, you know, just starting a page and getting 500 likes used to be really easy. Now, I like Beagles, I like Pizza Hut, I like, this, 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 you know, it's it, like, why do I want to like your page? What's in it for me? Um, people aren't as quick to push the button anymore. And I'm sure you notice that in your own lives as well, that it's just like, I don't want more stuff in my newsfeed. So that's where paid a lot of times can kind of get, get past that barrier. And for some reason, um, if, if you're paying to be in that spot, people are more likely to do something with the content. So. Um, that's what I have. I know we've got maybe like five minutes left. Is that? Yep. Cool. So we'll open it for questions there on um, this first session of, of administration, monitoring, and promotion of pages and groups. I have a question about the page. Um, yeah. Using a page. There's a new feature. We were trying to, we were using Hootsuites before, mm -hmm. but now they connected everything to Twitter. Um, and so we stopped yeah. using that. And the reason why we were using it is because we could plan out for a month all of our right. posts and have it feed in Facebook. But I noticed on um, the page site, they have a little delayed feature, but it works half the time. Right. Do you know why <laughs> it, that's the it's, case? It's not that great. Um, yeah, it, it like works maybe two days every two weeks yeah. is what we're noticing. And, and what we've seen is that, you know, if, if you schedule a post through Facebook and have a photo, mm -hmm. a lot of times a photo won't it show up. It takes forever to load or yeah. it won't, yeah. Um, and I know they have some restrictions around when this will show. It used to be 5,000 likes, actually. Yeah, because we're not there and we average Maybe we get Oh, you know what? Sorry, I'm, I'm thinking about that. Okay, feature. yeah, that's So yeah, this feature. this little button here. And it works half the time. So I don't know if I'm doing yeah, something it, wrong or. So the problem is, um, and if I accidentally post this, we're, <laughs> we're done for. So yeah, you add in your year. Mm -hmm. um, and then the NL goal game and the time. Yeah, and kind of drill down. It's today six, seven. Because one of the things, you know, a couple of books I looked at, they're saying one of the things that when you work kind of that eight to five hour that you're yeah. missing is you're missing that 8 p.m. beyond when most right. people are on. Right. So, you know, a lot of times we, we kind of look at, we call them just the Pepsi breaks, 10 a.m., mm -hmm. 2 p.m. And I got to work, I got some stuff done, I deserve a break. Okay. You know, <laughs> or I got back from lunch, I got some stuff done, I need a break. So those are those are great times, okay. um, you know, for like a, a non-traditional student audience. If you're looking at, at traditional students, students yeah, it, you kind of need to be there when they are there. Mm -hmm. um, one is just, you know, 
doing it at eight o'clock, which I hate to tell people to do because it's, it's not a healthy work life, but that's possible. Um, the other is when you boost the post to pay for it, mm -hmm. Facebook will keep it in that newsfeed longer and on, at a higher rank. Um, but yeah, this the, the problem with Hootsuite, Facebook kind of docks you for using a third party tool to update your page. Mm -hmm. um, there was a report that it, they decreased your, your reach by like 80%. And then they kind of admitted, yeah, we're doing that. We're sorry, we'll change it. Um, so they modified it a bit, but not really yeah. a lot. Um, well, we've so, stopped using it, and we've noticed they do everything now through Twitter. Yeah. You have to have a Twitter account to get things going, so we stopped using yeah, it. Yeah, through Hootsuite, And yeah. then Tumblr was too complicated. Yeah, so, uh, honestly, the, the best way is just coming here to the page and updating there. Um, and, and I agree that you can't necessarily rely on that, that timing it's, feature. Okay. So yeah. just when it works, great. When it doesn't, well, you just if, plan it out on your own. Like, I can't get it to consistently work. Yeah. And uh, there's really, it's, it's kind of one of those <coughs> dilemmas that, like, what do we pay for Facebook? Oh, okay. Nothing. Yeah, you know? That's true. <laughs> so we can't really call them up and tell them that it's not working, <laughs> but we really wish it did. Um, I mean, is there a way though to put in like bugs or whatnot for Facebook? There is. I, I mean, it, I'm sure. Or I mean, she could at least ask. I'm sure. Yeah, I, I would think it's been through. reported, but we experience it on a lot of other pages okay. as well. So I would say it's not isolated just to your page. Okay. And the other thing to remember though is too, like you know, if you just posted something right now, someone will see it later tonight when they're on if it's meant for. You know, to be in their news feed mm -hmm. at that point because it's going to decide if it really needs to touch that student. And you know, yeah. I'll get on Facebook three times in one day, once in the morning, once in the afternoon, and once at night, and I'll see the same story yeah. all three times yeah. in my most recent stuff just because it's more relevant for me according um, to Facebook. Edge Rank, which I talked about, the algorithm it has three three weights to it. Um, the first is affinity, so how often do you interact with the page? The second is just kind of this weight of like the type of interaction you have with them. Likes, comments, share, whatever it is. Um, if, if I get tagged in a photo on your page, that tells Facebook like this relationship is more than just online. So that's a great way to build that edge rank as you think about what you do. If you're taking pictures at events, posting them and tagging those students, then Facebook realizes, you know, I don't just like puppies. I you know, I was here at this event, I, I did something with them, and so it, it builds it that way. Um, but the third one is a time decay, meaning if you, you know, it's on your to-do list to post today, and you do it right when you walk in the office at 8.30, but no one interacts with it for a few hours, then Facebook does determine, okay, this content's not really that great, or no one cares about it. And it's not that it wasn't good, it's just that it hit at the wrong time. So I, I would say one thing we do with the clients a lot is check your Google Analytics of when do people hit your website and try to post around those times as well. Yeah. I have a question. So I have that personal account where I interact uh -huh. with all of our business students, uh -huh. and a lot of them are already in the class of 2017 because they're new at Thank you. Um, we, and I try to direct them to that. We have about 200 students that come in directly as direct admits mm -hmm. in the business school. Would it be useful to have a Kelly class of 2017? Or would so they could interact with each other, or would that kind of be oversaturating because direct admits mind, meaning um, they're freshmen class 2017 uh -huh. for IUI, but they're automatically in our business school. They meet direct admit requirements. Okay. So they're do not they going do they identify college. with that, or is that just an internal thing? No, they are okay. a direct admit, they're and they know that, and they're, they're it's cool to them. Class. Okay. Not you call. Yeah, then that can definitely be like a subgroup okay. that if if you have. You know, if you're if you're trying to encourage them, um, with Taylor University, they've got kind of this. It's called CLS, Community Learning Scholars, and so um, they're in the incoming class, but they're also CLS, and so we're using a group to basically rally them together and not give them homework through the summer, but like reading assignments to think of. So if you have like business specific news that you want to start to encourage, that could be a great way. Okay. So it won't be too much for them to be involved in all of these. Students. I don't think so. I mean, they'll 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 determine that. that. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions? Should I take one more? The clock's up. It's one one oh one. So. 
No? All right, well, I'll let you wrap it up. Yeah, well, feel free to you know email me if you think of any future questions for Brad. I can definitely contact him directly for you. Um, and again, we'll be posting this, the video and everything online so you can kind of go back to it. Please share it with your colleagues and share the future events as well that they could watch online. So thank you, Brad. Thank you.